Hey everybody, welcome to Go For Green Living Homestead. Uh, today I'm here with Brad from Full Spectrum Survival and Off Grid with Brad and Kelly. And we, we want to raise awareness towards something that happened to me today mm -hmm. that I think is very important on Homestead. Uh, me and Anna were out picking blackberries and I got stung above the eye and you could see how much it swelled up. And I'm not allergic to bees. And He's I'm, gotten stung even since I've been here a number of times, no yeah. problem. And, and from the same set of bees. Yes. And so you can see the, the bee boxes there behind us. It was actually one a little bit further. We're gonna stay away from that one. Even though all the boxes at nighttime, the bees are calm, they're inside. You'd really have to go thinking you were a bear and try to tear apart the box to really rile them up. Um, but you, you were over there and you were making a video with, yeah. with Anna. And this kind of shows how just a normal day where you're enjoying yourself, you're having a good time. He was making some videos. He was picking blackberries. They were gonna make blackberry jam and uh, blackberry pie and just, you know, normal, great, amazing things yeah. can can take a change when an event happens. So what were you doing over there? I was just uh, picking blackberries and I went, I didn't go up there aggressively, rush the hive or anything like that. And I started picking blackberries. But in the video, uh, you could see a bee start swarming behind me and trying to buzz my back and I didn't notice that. Okay. And then as soon as I stu stood up, he took that as aggressive and he, he walled he me good. You. She did. She knocked me out. So. Yeah. yeah, she tagged you. So, yeah. so you were just over there and I know because we were just down 500 feet or so and Kelly and I were, put, were weather sealing the wood and, uh, and you know we were down there. And I saw Daniel and Anna and they were just moving, you know, moving forward, moving forward, just like normal, collecting the back berries. And then a couple of seconds went by, I didn't see them. Yeah. And Anna came over and she said, my dad got stung by a bee. And, you know, we've been out here, I've gotten stung. Uh, you know, Daniel's gotten stung before. He's went to help other people with their hives. He got stung, you never had a reaction, right? No, I never had a reaction once. This is the first time. And, and so like Daniel said, you know, we have, and this is what you need in a community. This is what you need in a group. We have two varying skills. You put me in an aquaponics house or really even just with plants in general. And I'm kind of a, I can get it done kind of guy. And that's about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna thrive in that aquaponics house without a huge learning curve. Um, but Daniel has those skills along with solar and some other things. And when he got stung and started to see a different reaction, something that he wasn't used to, he knows that I have, I have a history and extensive knowledge of allergic reactions down from welts and hives all the way up to anaphylactic shock. Mm -hmm. So he came over and said, you know, what do you think's going on here? And, yeah. and this, he said he wanted to use for awareness, right? Yes, awareness, because uh, this could have been worse, right? Absolutely. So through, uh, as your body changes and adapts to uh, something that it doesn't agree with, whether that's a food allergen, hay fever, you know, uh, an airborne allergen outside or something like an ant bite or a bee sting, mm -hmm. different people's bodies can take into account different things that are going on with themselves like stress levels, sleeping habits, eating habits, things like that, and have different reactions for them. And so whereas Daniel had had no reaction to bees besides a little yeah. well, you know, what everyone's going to get. Yeah. Now he noticed a change and that's what you want to look out for and that's what Daniel wanted to bring awareness to mm -hmm. was this change, you have to take it to heart and take it to mind and say, I saw something different. So he came over, we took his blood pressure because your blood pressure is going to go down as you go into anaphylactic shock. We had taken his blood pressure before and he had normal blood pressure readings. Um, you know, pulse was a little bit elevated just because some different things were going yeah. on. You know, that's normal. My face normal. was all swollen up. Yeah, yeah so he, he had his eye swell up here. Uh, had other secondary hives around his neck, um, hives uh, in his glandular areas, um, you know, groin, under armpits, normal sign of allergic reaction, mm -hmm. but he didn't have, he didn't show signs of anaphylaxis. Blood pressure was not low, which it will be with anaphylactic shock. Uh, he was getting enough oxygen, didn't have any swelling on his lips, didn't have any swelling on his tongue, uh, breathing fine, swallowing fine, all of that was normal. Mm -hmm but yet it was still a change. Yes, and, and for what you were telling me before, that now this is a life change. Right. Now now I have to, to be aware of every sting. I have to be prepared with every sting now because there's gonna build up and it's gonna build up. 
to where it's going to become dangerous to me and it could it? yeah right it, 10 or 15 times it could become dangerous to me and it's really a huge unknown within the medical world that there's no certain trigger there's no one certain thing that everyone will say okay yes if you're this age or this diet or this race or anything they don't know because it's up to our individual bodies and mm -hmm. i was telling daniel that it's kind of like a road that drops off a cliff and so you're going along the road just fine. You've never had an allergic reaction ever. And then you drop off the cliff and start having a reaction. It doesn't go back up. You don't go back to normal. Oh, it, yeah. can, it can just be managed and hopefully not get worse than what you experience on your first major reaction. Yeah, so this is my first major reaction. So the next one probably will be similar to this. Or if, Pro uh, it's hard, really hard to say, but probably similar to this. Um, now you got to take into account all sorts of different things how many times you get stung this time was luckily just once mm -hmm. uh, so if you get stung four times you have to kind of proactively be ready for that so what we talked about was daniel said well you know we have bees here we're going to use them as a source of income we use them for the honey for our families you know use them as trade for the honey and the wax and everything make candles mm -hmm. they're a huge resource and you so of course you get you, you start to think about, well, how can I have bees if I have a reaction? You get a little apprehensive. Yeah, so. you get apprehensive. And so you know, we talked about it, yeah. and we're going to take an approach of using an abundance of caution. Mm -hmm. And yes. so like what next time we go to the hives, we're going to be suited up. Yes. And even, even if it's something simple, like just checking on them to see what they're doing, you know, we'll probably want to give the beehives a certain area of operation and kind of let that be their area of operation yeah and, yeah. and we have some property we can do that with yeah we, yeah we can do that and that's uh exactly what i was thinking you know maybe we can uh put them in a in a location that human beings are not around but they can still pollinate everything so yeah because you can you guys can see we're we're in this area mm -hmm. every day whether daniel's in the greenhouse families walking through you know we're always pretty close to the to the bees and what i've noticed just since being here is that Anytime it starts to get hotter, the bees get a little more antsy. Mm -hmm. They get a little more aggressive. They're sitting out on the front of the hive and uh, what they call bearding. You know, I'm just learning terms, so don't quote yeah. me on that. But uh, yeah, the, you go by the hive and you get two or three buzz in you. So I think it's a good idea for to get them out of human traffic areas. So yeah, uh, right. And, and you got to think as a bee, you know, if you're in this area where there's some um, vehicular traffic. There's humans going by, uh, dogs and cats are going by, there's noise, things like that. They're probably, just like you and I would be, they're always on alert. And so then when someone comes closer, they're thinking, okay, do I need to go protect the hive? And so we'll try to take that away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I was, I mean, the black bears were right in front. As you can see, the black bears were right in front of the hive. Normally I can walk over there and they're, they're not, I mean, I don't go there as aggressive. I right. had a white shirt on. Uh, it just there was one behind me and he was trying to get in and yeah so he was trying to tell you to get out of here yeah and you didn't know I didn't know he was buzzing my back so and, and then when I stood up he's like now I got you yeah or she right. she I keep calling him he's but so from you guys what are your thoughts have you experienced allergic reactions have you experienced different allergic reactions um, you know that, that have changed throughout your life or maybe the lives of your family and I, I was doing some reading when we first got here and back in medieval times they wouldn't have it wasn't a skilled member of the society like they wouldn't send the blacksmith out to go to the beehives <laughs> because of this type of an event yes. where you could run into uh you know building up a histamine reaction to it you could run into a, a something like this that they wouldn't want to take away from that blacksmith's job mm -hmm. so and, and if you look at tribes that still hunt wild honey today, they use an abundance of caution, you know, and they'll also cycle through. So, you know, if, if John Doe goes through one cycle, he won't go back out again to get the next one and they'll send another person through. Oh, okay. So that he's not getting stung again and again and again and again and, and having that chance to build up that reaction. Well, I didn't know that. That's uh, <laughs> we got a lot more to learn about bees too. So uh, well, I do, and, anyway. and that's just a learn. You know, it's something that we we all in our community. I don't think there's anything, any one thing you could be 
I don't believe that there's any one master of anything. No, I don't either. I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. So yeah, right. Uh, so we're gonna, as our plan of action tonight is, um, Daniel took a bath, uh, cooled down, cooled down his body. The histamine was starting to go down. What he had as well went down. Um, very light red prickling. The big welt, which was like the size of a child's fist, mm -hmm. on the side of his neck, went completely away. Uh, still a little swelling on the side, which that's a very sensitive area. You get stung on your lip, your, you know, the top of your hand, anything like that. It is very sensitive. Yeah. Um, so we're just kind of at a watch and wait, monitoring it. He knows, of course, that if he has, uh, if he has any type of respiratory issues or problem swelling or anything that he's going to come get me we're going to get you know emergency care we do have epinephrine here at the site so you know yeah. if anything not just daniel tonight but if anything happened with anybody we would be able to handle it and then get emergency care so we're just kind of watching and waiting but we want to know from you what are your thoughts and you know did you did you know that that could happen yeah i didn't know that it, that could happen because i'm a i'm not uh prone to uh poison ivy or poison oak either i can pull it up with my hands but building up the histamine now has got me worried that I don't need to be doing that. <laughs> and that's another thing, poison ivy. Um, you know, we were we were just out taking some photographs of poison ivy and doing some research on it. It's the same thing, and, and they don't know why. So this was a Harvard study that discussed how people can go through their whole lives and not have a reaction to it, and then they get into it, and from that point forward, they're hive broken. So it's just one of those things that, you know, as our bodies change and they say they change very often, that you gotta watch out for. So, whereas Daniel, he's told me, he's like, I, don't, I have no problem with poison ivy. And he, he does get in there with no problem. Even though I've never had a reaction, I come out looking like, you know, someone from outer space and I'm <laughs> fully covered with gloves on and something around my face and then I'll mess with it. <laughs> well, yeah, it, knowing that, the, his, I've, I've known that, I read it a long time ago, but, Histamine builds up in your body, but uh, I thought you could cleanse it out or something, you know, but you know, I don't know. And, and, you know, we talked about diet and things like that too. Are there different stress uh, triggers? And certainly there are. So maybe if we did like a whole lifestyle change for, you know, for the whole families, maybe then you would experience a different reaction to poison ivy or things like that. But with bee stings, really anything in my opinion that you risk anaphylaxis on, you have to treat extremely carefully. Mm. Yeah, and this was a super, like you said, super sensitive area with all the veins and everything and it, it oh, ow, it really hurts to, to the touch too. But, uh, so it instantly got through, all through my bloodstream. Yeah, so right. It wasn't like on the arm or a hand where it sat in that one area. It went circulating through my whole body, so. Yeah, so guys, I, I hope that maybe this inspired you to think about those things. Um, and this, it, it wouldn't hurt to have uh, some pre pre preparations there yeah, in, right. in the background, just in case. I mean, you never know. Could be you, could be your wife, could be your kids. And so, Let me tell you, if this is the public service announcement I have for you. If you go to your doctor, next time you just go for any normal reason, a normal checkup, taking your kids, whatever it is, tell them, say, listen, uh, we go camping every couple of months and we go far away and I'd like to have an, an EpiPen, an epinephrine pen with me. Will you write me a prescription for one? The doctor will have no problem writing you a prescription for one, and then you'll have that peace of mind that if a life-threatening emergency reaction were to take place, you'd be okay. That's the best tip I've heard, especially after today. Yeah, <laughs> it makes you think about new things. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be asking him next time I, I go to the doctor. Can I get an EpiPen? <laughs> yeah, and they have no problem because it can't be used for anything nefarious. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> well I appreciate uh, Brad helping me on this. I think it's an important message uh, that, that you need to consider in your homestead, so uh, or your off-gridness, and or just in your normal in life. Ev ev yeah. everyday life. So, but anyway, uh, we love you, and we'll catch you on the next video. Hey guys. <laughs>